Hey guys, um, if you're wondering why I'm wearing the exact same outfit, it's because I'm making this video right after I made the last video. So now I'm going to review chapter 17 through 22. Remember, I'm doing this right along with you, so don't be like you're the only one. Um, first, we're going to do vocab. So for this one, you had to use the context clues and help determine the meaning of the underlined word in the following sentences. Then you had to compare with the dictionary definition. I just... Um, Um, I wrote the defini dictionary definitions down. I am excited to see what you thought it meant, though. I knew what the words meant, so I just did the dictionary definition. But anyways, one, I disagree with those who say weather does not affect your mood because I became sullen or dark or because I become sullen or dark on rainy days. Um, sullen to me just means like bad mood, grumpy. So the dictionary definition is gr bleh gloomy because of bad humor or anger so if you're sullen you're definitely like grumpy you're gloomy so rainy days can definitely affect your mood like right now it's raining and crappy outside so that's why i'm filming these videos and giving myself something to do two we watch the young deer leap and carabit in the sunny meadow so if i'm leaping i'm probably jumping around too right so dictionary definition run and jump around playfully Number three, even though he had a fever, my brother feared he would be accused of malingering if he stayed in bed all day. Now, this word is definitely a word probably none of you have heard, but um, the dictionary definition of malingering or malingering, however you want to say it, um, avoiding work or duty by pretending to be sick or injured. So... Have you ever, like, tried to stay home from school because you were, you know, sick? Yeah, you would have been um, malingering or malingering. That had been you. Number four is um, in a frenzy to find her white blouse, the young girl pulled armloads of clothes from her closet and flung them onto her bed. Frenzy to me just means, like, um, uh oh, something came up on my phone. Oh. Frenzy to me just means like panicked. So um, the dictionary definition is frantic activity. And lastly, the last um, vocab word for chapter 17 through 22 is amnesia. I feared you were suffering from amnesia when you couldn't recite your name and address. Um, amnesia, most of us have heard of this, like just forget your memory. So the dictionary definition is partial or totally lost, total loss of memory. So those are the five vocab words. Um, if you have any questions about them. Drop a comment below. And then there should have been just, um, yeah, there's just two little things for literacy devices, and it's on symbolism. So a symbol in literacy is a person, a place, a thing, or an event used to represent an idea or a set of ideas. And what do Ben and Sal use to symbolize their soul? Remember, um, the teacher had him do that crazy assignment, gave him 15 seconds to draw your soul. If we were in school doing this together, I'd have you do it. I had it. Did it with my class last year. It was really cool. Um, but they both drew a maple leaf. And what do you think uh, trees symbolize in this book? Obviously, like every single chapter, we talk about stinking trees. So to me, um, I feel like this this question is more of an opinion question. But I think trees symbolize life in this book, happiness. Like most of her memories of trees are really happy memories so far. I think they um, mean growth. It's where the songbirds are, good symbols. So I think trees, you could have put down a ton of different things for what trees symbolize in this book. And I'd been A-OK -okay with all of them. So that was page 11. Now I'm moving on to page 12. Page 12 was a um, Venn diagram. Love those. Um, obviously, everyone's Venn diagram is going to be different. I'm just going to sh uh, share a few of what I put in here. So, you use the Venn diagram below to compare the characters, Sal and Phoebe. Write the qualities they have in common in the overlapping cir circle. And um, we can, you're free to fill this out more as the book goes, if you don't have a lot in it. Um, so, I put for Sal, I put her as brave. She is a strong person. Um, she's Native American. Um, she's very solemn. I feel like she's kind of kept to herself most of the story, except for when she's with her grandparents, but at school, she's a very solemn person. Um, she's a very good storyteller. Um, they're both females. Both their mothers are now MIA. Phoebe is super worrisome. Phoebe has a sibling where Sal doesn't. Um, Phoebe's stiff. She's very proper. She's very rigid. And she also has that crazy, wild imagination. So those are just a few things I put. I have a few more, but, um, 
feel free to fill in whatever. If you want to share some of the things you put, you're free to comment it below. Um, love a Venn diagram, though. It's a good way to compare. Um, there were five questions for chapters 17 through 22, and um, my answers are over here, so that's why I'm going to be looking over here. Um, sorry. To find the... Okay, so. Remember, review questions, review question document, or paper. Writing activities, writing activity document, or paper. So number one. Why does Sal mistrust Mr. Berkway? And do you think her mistrust is justified? Like, do you think she has a real reason for her mistrust or no? Um, so I put Sal mistrusts Mr. Berkway because Phoebe informed her that he has spent time at Margaret Cadaver's house. Phoebe has convinced Sal that he has committed evil deeds, even though everything about him seems to deny that possibility. And I really don't think her fear or her mistrust is that justified. Um, he hasn't actually done anything wrong. I think it's just Phoebe's convinced Sal. So that second part of that question is an opinion question. Number two, what unexpected discovery does Phoebe make when she returns home from the dentist? How do she and the other families react to this event? What effects does it have on Sal? So this is a big, big question. Um... When Phoebe returns from the dentist, she finds three notes um, from her mother. Her father's note explains that Mrs. Winterbottom had to leave. Phoebe immediately assumes Mrs. Winterbottom was kidnapped by a lunatic. Of course it was a lunatic. Mr. Winterbottom does not register any outward emotion. Like, he's just, like, solemn. He's just like, oh, yep, she's gone. I don't know. I thought it was a little odd how he didn't really react. Um, Prudence asks a trillion questions, and Sal is devastated by this news. When her father tries to reassure her, she begins to think that maybe a miracle will occur, and her mother will come back, and the family will turn to buy banks. But I think this is really hard on Sal, because her mother's also gone, gone and now her like best friend and um, Euclid's mother's gone. So I think that brings a lot of feelings up for her, and it's really hard on Sal. So... Hope you had an answer similar to mine. Um, three, what do Ben and Sal's drawings seem to indicate about their relationship? Um, since uh, Sal and Ben coincidentally drew the same design, it suggests that they perceive the world in the same way, that they just have like a similar way of thinking. And um, I think that's a little bit of foreshadowing. Like maybe they're going to get a little bit closer as the book goes on. So I'm excited to see that relationship. I also think Ben has serious crush on Sal. Four, what similarities exist between the way Sal and Phoebe react to this appearance of their mothers? Um, both Sal and Phoebe refuse to believe their mother will not return. Even all this time, Sal still thinks her mom's coming home. And uh, Phoebe, of course, is like, no, she's going to come home. She's going to come home. Both tell lies about their mother leaving. Um, remember, um, no one even knows up in Euclid what happened to Sal's mom or where she's at. She hasn't even told Phoebe yet. And Phoebe says, oh, my mom's on a business business meeting in London. Um, they both get angry when anyone tries to console them or make them feel like it's going to be okay. And um, they are both kind of really depressed about the situation. They're not functioning the way that you think um, normal, like, preteens, teens should be functioning. And lastly, why is Phoebe intent on finding evidence that her mother was kidnapped? Um, of course, Phoebe, this is number five, Phoebe wants to think her mother was kidnapped instead of choosing to leave. It's hard on Phoebe to think my mother chose to leave me. So she's preferring to think that her mother was kidnapped rather than thinking she left her on her own free will because she was unhappy. So Phoebe, of course, wants to make this story in her head that my mom didn't leave me. You know, she she had to go. Someone made her go, not that she just wanted to go. So um, there is all the review questions for chapter 17 through 22 and our one uh writing activity for chapter 17 through 22 it's the fifth writing activity so if you're doing it on the um google docs you're on number five so think about the meaning of the third mysterious message in the course of a lifetime what does it matter what do you think will matter over the course of your lifetime what may seem important now that may not um, as much later on. Mrs. Kneifel wishes she 
uh, knew this quote way more when I when I was younger, because some things just seem so important to us right now, but really in the grand scheme of things, they're not going to matter. Um, so like, in the course of a lifetime, what is actually going to matter? So um, how you treat people matters, how you re- uh, respond to situations matters, you know, not getting your favorite dinner on Tuesday night is not going to matter in the course of a lifetime, right? You're um, not being able to play outside with your friends right now because it's quarantine. Like, yeah, it stinks right now, but in the course of a lifetime, it's going to be okay because someday we're going to all going to be able to hang out together again and it'll be better. So, um, lots of things I think seem really important in the moment, but if you think about them in the grand scheme of your entire life, they're really not as important. That's a really deep quote, my opinion. If we were at school right now, I'd be putting it on my little letter board. So, Um, I'm sorry we're not at school for me to do that. But that um, was pages 11, 12, and 13 of our packet. So you should now be done all the way up to page 13. You should have read all the way to chapters 22 by now. This should be popping up Tuesday morning. Um, Right now it's Saturday night again and I'm filming. But, um, of course, if you have any questions... All you need to do is type them below and I will answer them. I hope this is super helpful to you guys. Have a great day. Oh, and also comment if you're watching this, okay? Like, I want to know that you're actually using this video. I'm taking all this time to film.